talk is by Professor J.R. Yang. Uh, he's a, a leader of Steel's research in Taiwan as a whole, and really does uh, an enormous amount of work on steel, both through the CBMM center that he has created over there and in the whole of the Department of Materials, which he led for many, many years. So, Yang. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Harry, the team of AP, APS, uh, for uh, such wonderful uh, organization so that uh, I can meet you here. And uh, Harry uh, gave me this topic, and I feel very satisfied because it's good to understand very, very special phenomena. Uh, in fact, uh, secondary hardening uh, commonly happen in mining site of steel uh, uh, containing uh, high strong uh, carbon element like chlorine, vanadium, nabin, and moly. And here, uh, I would like to report to you, uh, emphasize that secondary hardening also happen in low carbon vanadium steel. So uh, let's look at uh, how to produce low carbon benefit steel through careful chemical uh, alloying addition and also we need control the lowering and also accelerated uh, cooling we can get high quantities of benign easily in low carbon steel and ideally the low carbon benefit steel provide high toughness and high strength and of course, good weatherability. So we expected this steel is quite useful for automobile application. And uh, that's my uh, subject because uh, we have a collaboration with a CBMM company and CBMM company always push us to do the research related with uh, steel, uh, steel uh, application for automobile and here I would like to show you the typical uh, microstructure of low carbon bandit steel from our research result in fact people always said always said it's a granular band and when when we check Harry's book we know Harry has has written a beautiful uh, review for granular band line. And from that, I knew that there's a paper published in 1950 by Harbrican. Is that right? Yes. Yes, sir. And he said that the coast favorite prey looked like granular. But I would like to raise a question here. Can this terminology, this uh, terminology, granular band line, signify the exact structure? Can anybody answer me? <laughs> Can anybody answer me? Of course, we need TEM to clarify the detailed microstructure. So I will give you the answer now. So we should consider the terminology of granular band line. It's long, but in this talk, I will keep this terminology because it's quite convenient to communicate with the people. So here we can see the subunit benetic ferrite here, and the thickness about 200 nanometer, so it's so thin. And also the subunit with the same orientation. So the coarse ferrite prey, in fact, is composed the ferrite subunit uh, and because the subunit with the same orientation and we couldn't distinguish the, the detail. And in my research, we would like to develop the low carbon bandit steel and the China steel has prepared three steel for us. And for, the, for the three steel, we have the same compost, base compost. I would like to show it here. The best composition is 0 0.05 carbon and magnet 1.7 magnets and niobin 0.08. That's best 
chemical composition. For the steel one, uh, the niobium, we call, we label niobium steel because it's without moly. And for the steel two, with 0.1 moly, and we label this steel niobium moly steel. For the third steel, we have 0. We present moly, and we label this steel niobium three moly. Sandy steel prepared this this three steel for us and cast into an ingot and after homogenization at 1200 degrees C for two hours the steel, the ingot were hot loaded <coughs> and by control low the loading rate about 20% per pass and the fringe loading temperature around 900 degrees C and here we can have a five millimeter thick strip. So the reduction rate is quite high. So we can imagine the grand refine also happened here. And after finished loading, the strip were treated by accelerated cooling to 650 degrees C or 550 degrees C or 450 degrees C for 10 minutes for bandline transformation. So here, we can have a uh, seven strip at room temperature. Uh, I would like to emphasize here because we will look at the microstructure later on. Now being 650, and that's get from the uh, isothermal transformation at 650 degrees C, and now being more 650, and also we have now being 550, now being more 550, and niobin 455, niobin moly 455, and niobin 3, uh, 455. We have seven strips. These strips were reheated at 600 degrees C for different time interval from 0 0.5 to 8 hours to investigate whether the second event hardening happened. I think the metallography uh, data is very important. We need that because we would like to correlate it to the property. Here, I would like to show you the typical structure of the so-called granular band line. And we can see this is MA, it's Martin Side Osner constitute. And it's quite easy to distinguish from MA and degenerated pearl from the morphology. And here uh, is a look like a granular structure. It's a granular band line. And here is spray line. In fact, it's very difficult to distinguish between the granular band line and a lot of multi spray line. So we try our every effort to distinguish. First, we can see the use weakest harmonies to distinguish. And second, we try to eat EBSD plan B to distinguish. And this is our result here. This SEM for now being 450 strip, we have 25 volume percent of atomic free ferrite and 63 granular bandline and 9% martensite or osinite phases and 3% degenerate pyrite. And indeed, it's very, very important to have this quantitative data in order to understand the mechanical behavior. Here, I would like to show you the EBS te technique to, to understand uh, this technique, how to use it to distinguish ferrite and bandite. Here is an example uh, to show you the misorientation measurement between the subunit in granular bandite. This is subgrant A and we can get Kikuchi pattern here. <coughs> and this is subgram B, we can get Kikuchi pattern here. And in fact, through the software, we can easily get the misorientation angle. But precisely, we try to describe the misorientation by axis angle pair. So from the subgram A, we can have Euler angle here. And from the subgram B, 
we can have Euler angle here. But in fact, we have reference crystal. So we can get the subgrant A relative to the reference crystal orientation <coughs> matrix. And also, we can get subgrant B relative to the reference crystal. So we can uh, have these two basic orientation relationship. And then we can get the subgrant A and subgrant B rotation matrix. So here, I would like to show you the commercial data always show us this angle. Why? Because we have 24 axis angle pair, and the commercial data always choose the, the lowest angle. So when we use this software, we must consider how the soft software engineering has done for us, because we should understand the crystal crystallography meaning. And in fact, by using the, the minimum angle, it's quite easy to interpret. But we should understand the physical meaning. Here, I would like to show you two examples. For the band line, we can have the distributive misorientation angle, something like this. And we have two peaks here. This is low angle, and this is angle for 60 degrees C. Maybe somebody understand why it's located at 60 degrees C. 60 degrees. And for the free ride, we can see the misorientation angle always a uh, high angle. So from the intensity here, it's very easy to distinguish band line and free ride region. So based on this concept and technique, we uh, quantitatively uh, estimate the data for the strip, 950 strip and 950 strip. Here we consider adding 0 0.1 moly, we can uh, have a higher hardability of band line. So the granular band line from 63 uh, one percent increase to 66 percent. And the free ride decreased from 25 uh, volume percent to 14 percent. So the, the moly addition as effect is quite significant. On the other hand, we can check this. Niobin 550 strip and Niobin moly 550. By adding 0 0.1 moly, we can see zero granular band line increase to 60, 62 granular band line. And <coughs> here, now being 5D strip contain 87 volume percent free ride. And here is 16 volume percent free ride. So basically, the structure are completely different. So it's very important uh, when we uh, study the market property, we always to wish get the metallograph, uh, the quantitative data in order to understand what's the, what's the mechanical behavior so that we can control the microstructure and the mechanical behavior we both. Here, I would like to show you the stress curve for the Niobium Moly 550 strip and for the Niobium Moly 450 strip because the structure are very, very similar. You can see uh, granular band line 62, 66, uh, traumatic free free 16, 14, and MA 21, 19, and 1% degenerate pro right, and 1% degenerate pro right. So you can see the curve look very similar. And for these two st strip, Niobium 550 and Niobium 4, 455, we can see uh, this Niobium 550 contains zero band line. And this curve show uh, there's a sharp ear point here because 80, 87 are so much very right in this in this deal. And as to now being 455, we can see there is a plateau, slightly plateau here because they this deal contain 25 are so much very right. And let's compare now being 550 and now being modi 550 after tempering for different time interval, this strip contains zero 
granular benign. So they, there is no uh, secondary hardening can be detected. However, however for Navi Moly 550, we can see after one hour, the hardness raise up quickly, and there's a very strong peak occur on the after ten, after two hour tempering. Here also we show now been moly four fifty five, now been four fifty, contain granular band sixty six percent, and here sixty three percent, and we have uh, we can detect the, the secondary hardening after one hour tempering at six hundred degrees C. And let's look at these two transfer curve here. Okay. And this curve show now be 65 without granular benign. And this curve contain uh, now be 63 uh, granular benign. And after tempering one hour, we expected this curve will raise up. I can show you quickly here. So it's quite significant the second the second hardening occur in benedict flare up. And the, the microstructure development seems very important. So uh, I would like to show you the, the data quickly. Sorry. OK, it, it seems something wrong. These two data we couldn't, we couldn't show, so I don't know the reason. But here, uh, I would like to show you from the EBSD, we can show the peak is quite significant for the now being three moly because there are a lot of green bella. And also we study the dislocation density for now being 450, now being moly 450, and now being three 450. And after 10 being one hour and and eight hour, we can see that this okay density doesn't change. So it means the structure, the structure property, the disorganic structure property is quite stable for this alloy. And also we use high resolution TTM to observe the carbide, and we can see the carbide always uh, precipitate on the dislocation, and it's very, very tiny. And the carbide always with the MC structure, and this is a uh, breaker and nothing orientation relationship. And also for Navi Moly steel, we can see uh, the MC carbide and the Baker and Newton orientation relationship. And here uh, we show the dark field image because the carbide is very tiny and we would like to observe the carbide density and we try to use a traditional dark, dark field to observe the density. And in fact, the carbon is very, very tiny. And from the hydrogen TEM, we uh, measure the size of carbide. And the, the number of carbide we, we measure about 300 particles. And we can see the carbide size <coughs> keeps very, very small for Narvin and Narvin Molesteel. And from the, from the EBSD, uh, EBSD narrow prop, we also uh, would like to observe the chemistry for the carbide, and here is the data. And for tempering uh, at 600 degrees C for eight hours, the Navin and Moly atomic uh, ratio is about 1.8 for this sample. And for Navin 3 Moly 455, and the atomic ratio about 1 over 1. And finally, I would like to show you the data quickly, and here it's quite significant. We can have the second hardening effect <coughs> after a short time tempering. And in fact, for industrial application, we should consider the ear strength and tensile strength and also elongation. So after one hour tempering, you can see the ear strength and tensile strength increased, and also the elongation also increased. <coughs> so it's very good to use this material for industrial wow. application because if we, uh, if we can uh, choose the proper, proper the, uh, processing and after benign forming and we uh, heat it just for a short time 
and the strength and elongation both increase. Finally, I would like to give a brief <coughs> conclusion. Uh, in, my, in our uh, low carbon non contaminated steel, and we find the moly addition has a addition has an advantage of produce high volume fraction of granular bandline and it's good for second during harvest during tampering and I think it's very important for industrial application and especially uh, consider the low carbon and low alloy steel. Thank you for your attention. Excellent lecture. Thank you. What is remarkable is uh, the stability yes. of the structure. Yes. And even with tempering at 600, you maintain the strength, the dislocation density, yes, yes. and increase ductility. Yes, yes. So the idea would be that the 600 degrees C happens during coiling. Yes, exactly. Okay. E exactly. Uh, you have a lot of MA constituents also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So is it carbides are forming in granular bilite or in those MA constituents? How would you differentiate this? Okay, two? it's very easy. Uh, because uh, we, can, uh, we can see uh, the, in the bandline region, we can see the subunit as I show you, and it's a subgrain, and it's completely different from the MA phases area. So even, even after tempering uh -huh. also, even after tempering also, because tempered modern side would look this similar also. Okay. Tempering modern side always uh, give you coarse carbide. Always gives you coarse carbide. We can discuss later. <laughs> uh, why did you okay. use, for example, niobium and molybdenum? And what about uh, vanadium, which is known is very effective as for hardening, for example, in high-speed steels. Okay. And the second uh, question okay. is, why did you use, for example, only uh, tempering at the temperature of uh, 600 degrees? Okay, that's very good. Thank you very much. Yes. Uh, for this aluminum design, in fact, we we should keep we should have high volume pressure of bandline. So how to get high volume pressure of bandline? And I think the now being the moly uh, pay an important role for the uh, hardability of them. So uh, in this work, we, we add now being uh, the label is 0.08 percent. That's the reason uh, we use now instead of vanadium because we would like to increase the hardability of them. Okay. And your second question is uh, about okay. In fact, uh, because uh, because of the time limit. I couldn't show my result for 500 degrees C and 550 and 650, but I choose the best one, okay, 600. Uh, we, we have a question from uh, online. Uh, David Hodig, um, he asked in experiment procedure, okay. you refer the AC, air cooling. Mm -hmm. Does that uh, air cooling from a uh, five mil thick strip or uh, commercial simulation? Uh, after I saw some transformation at let's say 450 degrees C, and the co the strip cool, natural cool, to room temperature. We suppose the band line already there, already there. So we don't need to use fast cooling at the final stage. Is that okay? Yeah. And another question from Su Jie. Mm -hmm. um, you say something about um, niobium increase the hardability. Yes. Uh, and uh, you form a granular bainite. Yes. And how do you separate the ferrite and granular bainite? That's, that's the question. OK. Because it's a low carbon steel, so it's very difficult to get completely complete bainite structure. So we always, have a, we always have some ferrite. So that's the reason we need accelerated the cooling. And also, we need microalloy addition. So that parameter is very important for us. So we just try and error to, to prepare this material. But um, in the question is saying, yes. how do you distinguish the ferrite from the bainite? I think you answered it in your presentation. It's very, but it's you, very easy, yeah. just by vicus hardness. We can distinguish vicus hardness, it's very easy. And also through EBSD, we can distinguish EBSD. Uh, someone should comment on the fact that uh, 
niobium and molybdenum dissolve in the same carbide, whereas we know that doesn't happen with titanium and molybdenum. Do, do we know whether molybdenum should be soluble in niobium carbide? I know it. Okay. Yes, I know it because uh, we used, uh, for example, ni ni niobium in high-speed steels and uh, complex uh, carbides uh, were formed, which uh, contains, for example, both the elements. When, you, uh, when we did the uh, uh, first first calculation on the uh, niobium carbide with molybdenum, then the energetically it is not favorable uh, for the niobium carbide to contain the molybdenum. Okay. So just develop that a little bit more. So if it's not energetically favorable, why is it? In the molybdenum, uh, titanium molybdenum, we found that the some addition of the moly, molybdenum in the titan carbide will relax the, the strain energy, interface strain energy between the ferrite and the uh, uh, titan carbide. But it is not clear that uh, uh, the same mechanism control the uh, uh, moly, uh, molybdenum, uh, molybdenum accommodation in the niobium carbide. So I, I think uh, you know, the chemical analysis here is quite interesting. Uh, yes. of the carbide yes, and yes. very clear your yeah. microscopy in and fact, chemical analysis. In fact, this results no good because we need 3D data to understand. If, if we just use a, use a electron probe, hmm. we couldn't detect the exact composition for this carbide. Right. Because some carbide, we always we, we can see some co-shear structure. But so there, there's no doubt that yeah. uh, you get both peaks. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, so you're but, going to do uh, some... My, my, my question is, uh, because we, we just temper for one hour and we can increase the stress and also increase the, the elongation. Right. So we suppose the, the narrow carbide precipitation occur in the short time. Okay. In the short time. Uh, <laughs> another question from okay. uh, Ian. Uh, okay. He asked uh, so how much niobium you have already precipitated uh, before tempering and uh, how effective is niobium that participate in a secondary hardening? Okay, I think that's a very, very good question. We need very good dichromometer to perform this research in the near future. Not now, because, it's, because I, I, I get the, the specimen from industry and we need theoretical work, so we need very good dichromometer, but made, made by TA to, to perform this experiment. So, so we could we couldn't get, get, get you an answer at this moment. So, yep. Uh, short question. Uh, first, thanks for the excellent talk, and it's a very difficult story that you okay. uh, you show here how to characterize the microstructure. In fact, uh, I have a question about EBSD data. You you separate between uh, ferrite and, and bainite here, yes. and you use misorientation profiles. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, have you ever tried to? To, to use not misorientation profiles, but kernel average misorientation or some other type of maps in EBSD, as far as both uh, structural constituents, they have different dislocation density, probably would be better revealed there. So I, for example, the image quality mm -hmm. that we use? Or different criteria, because, okay. yeah, or there's, in a recent version of some software, you, you could use even a kernel map on the image quality. Mm -hmm. so, do you have some, some experience with that? Okay, I, I think uh, the chemistry quality is, is, a, is a good way. And also, we, we should consider the density effect. But, uh, however, I think uh, there are several measures we can, we can consider which one is the best one. And in fact, we have used uh, image quality to distinguish the MA phases is quite easy because it's become yeah. dark. Yeah. MA phases is quite easy Fair to be. Yeah. And ferrite and bainite, uh, basically, we know uh, the bainite with the high dissociation density, so some people will consider the image quality, but in fact, we still can see in our result. So uh, we, 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 basically, I suppose the step size is very important, is it? But step my size. point in this case is mm -hmm. that if you use this approach to misorientation, you always will get pixels. Mm -hmm. Similar misorientation, both in bainite and in ferrite. And this is, 
least I don't understand how it can. You, you never can get a clear record for, for, for what I think. Okay. And so in fact, for this granular band line, the automatic is, is huge, much bigger than the magnetic okay. subunit. So, 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 so we can distinguish it easily. Um, I, I'd like to confirm that w we've also um, we've also measured molybdenum in a number of niobium carbides. Um, your your presentation showed very clearly that you have secondary hardening at 600 degrees, mm -hmm. um, and I, I guess that's probably the peak of the of the hardening. Um, my question is, um, uh, what about carbide formation? strengthening carbide formation uh, in the bainitic microstructure itself. So it's obviously incomplete uh, because you can, you can increase the strength by a secondary uh, heat treatment. Um, but uh, can you tell us anything about the extent of precipitation uh, during or after the bainitic transformation itself uh, in the primary cooling stage? Okay. That's that's really a very good question because uh, we have compared the both microstructure and we suppose there's a little bit difference. Also, also we can use a weaker hardness to test first. So compare with weaker hardness, we can see the clear difference. Okay. Okay. Um, I, I think uh, okay. I think that roughly answers your question. Um, because we have to go for lunch, yeah, the, the co college. Yeah, here, here is the answer. Here. So just compare the, the big sadness of for the original one and temper, temper. Uh, Yang, yeah. thank you very, very much oh, for really well. Thank you. Thank you.